as an earlier one led to an injury of a PIU officer. Well, on Monday, residents who had information that the company is scheduled to kickstart work tried to stop them, but they were stopped as well by the PIU officers who were stationed there. Well, since the last clash, hell broke loose leading to the death of three persons in Faraba. It's a sad day here at Faraba as members of the community class with members of the police intervention unit that led to the killing of three youths of the village. Several others have been left injured. Where we are standing right now is the house of Fansu O Jung Hante, who is the former chief of Faraba, accused of taking bribe from Julake that led to him giving license to my son in the community. Paradise TV News is here to bring you a full coverage of these happenings. He's my blood brother. He's next to me. Uh, well, I was called when I was at Farato. So it was my cousin who called me. He told me that your younger brother, you know, is involved in a, a kind of, I don't know what. So the, the paramilitary, they released this uh, tear gas on them. So he fainted. You see. So... I went to the hospital, Birikama. When I entered, I entered the house. I saw my my brother. He was dead, as straight as a stick. So that was the thing, you know. I saw. So I came from there. They referred him to Banjul. He went with my my dad went with the deceased and some of the people to Banjul. What was his name? It was Smela, but Smela, but yeah. The authorities, I want them to value my younger brother's life. I want them to play justice in this. Because this thing is a deliberate death. As a, as a paramilitary, I think you should, you should prioritize peace, establishing peace. I see. How can you just see someone, you just shot him at the neck and at the, at the, at the, at the heart. You say you, have, you, you, are, you, want to, you want to establish peace. That is the thing. I don't want to talk much, but what I want the government to do, let them value my younger brother's life. That is by making sure that justice displayed. That is what I want. Meanwhile, President Adam Abaro has since ordered for the suspension of sand mining activities in Faraba and also set up a committee to investigate the incident. While still on issues raised in Faraba, the Inspector General of Police of the Gambia, Landing Kinte, has resigned from his position following the development in Faraba where three persons have been confirmed dead. The meeting was convened with the presence of all the stakeholders, starting from Julake, uh, who is the contractor in this case, and then the Village Development Committee, and then the Council of Elders, and the Alcalo, all of Faraba, Banta. Uh, together with uh, line ministries within government, which are stakeholders in this matter, and that is uh, the uh, PS uh, Petroleum was here. Then the Commissioner Petroleum was also, was also in the meeting. Then the Ministry of Local Government, represented by the PS, were also here. Physical planning was in the meeting also. Lands and surveys were also in the meeting. The Director of Geology was also in the meeting. I've got Char, Mine and Quarry, Quarry Inspector was also in the meeting. NEA was also ably represented in this meeting. So uh, it's not a meeting only by the police and the community of Faraba Abanta, as, as said. In fact, the only people going out to spew this kind of uh, information is some elements within the VDC who are disgruntled because they are source of income that was illegally you know, uh, gotten is being taken from them. That was the interview we had with the IGP prior to the incident. When the president, Adam Abaro, was also at Faraba, and our reporter, Lamin Fal, was there, and this is his report.
saga, which started with community members accusing the Inspector General of Police of siding with some village elders for Julake, a private sand winning company, to be issued license to win sand in the community. The youths of the village who were called to a meeting by the IGP, by the former IGP at his office, came back to their community to hold a meeting to discuss the details of the meeting they had with the IGP. The meeting turned violent when a PIU vehicle sped through the community and as well when they spotted a payloader walking on a demarcated road to the sand winning site. This past Monday, the community members again clashed with members of the police intervention unit that led to the death of three youths of the village and left several others injured. Today, Friday, the President of the Republic is here to speak to the people of Faraba as well as extend his condolences to the families of the deceased. Paradise TV News is here to bring you details of this happening. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Adam Abaro, has told the villages of Faraba to exercise patience for justice will be served. The inquiry that is set up is meant to bring out all the details relating to the Faraba Banta saga. The village members who spoke at this gathering were blunt to say that the police are at fault and thus justice must be served. Lamin Fal for Paradise TV News. Well then, granite, which is the Gambia's cash crop, is at risk as the international market has begun rejecting those from the country as a result of the presence of a fungus called aflatoxin. This was disclosed by the Trade Minister of the Gambia, Dr. Aisa Tuture, at the opening of the conference organized by the Food Safety and Quality Authority on the challenges of aflatoxin in the country. According to Dr. Toure, the ministry had had some consignments being rejected by the international buyers due to the contamination by aflatoxin. Lemon Fall was there, and this is his report. Food Safety and Quality Authority today is holding a conference here at Kairaba Beach Hotel on development challenges of aflatoxin contamination. Chemically speaking, aflatoxin is a type of mycotoxin produced by two different species of mold known as Aspergillus flavus and Aspergillus parasiticus. Aflatoxin doesn't only affect agricultural produce but also affect products from the Gambia in both national and international markets. It doesn't stop there. It also affects health of uh, consumers. Prada's TV News is here to bring you details of this conference. The reason we're having this conference today, as you heard through the many speeches that were given during the opening, is that aflatoxin causes a serious problems in Africa, the whole continent. But within the Gambia, it affects our groundnuts, rice, and maize, but especially our groundnuts. And as we're all aware, groundnut is a very big export crop for the Gambia. And in the 70s, 80s, we we're one of the biggest exporters of groundnuts, and our quality of the groundnut was recognized worldwide. But in recent years, from around 2013 to date, we've had uh, situations where almost 90% of our consignments of uh, granules are rejected because not only are they not fit for human consumption, but they barely make the minimum levels to be given to animals as animal feed. So this conference is important in that it allows all of us from different sectors, that is the farmers, the private sector, those that are selling it, the Food Safety and Quality Authority, who is responsible for enforcing safety and quality, the Standards Bureau, the Ministries of Trade, Agriculture and Health, to come together to talk about how these, uh, you know, the aflatoxin challenges affect the nation as a whole, because it affects our livelihood, because when the, um, when the groundnuts cannot be sold, they affect the economy. Yeah? When we eat the bad groundnuts, they affect our health. We hear cases of more incidences of liver cancer. I mean, there's not really a big study yet to show the correlation, but it is there. When you eat bad groundnuts, you get liver cancer. When we give it to our crops, uh, through the hay we give them, it goes to the cows, to the sheep. And when we eat the meat, the poultry, the eggs, or the milk, it affects us. So this allows us a forum to talk together, come together, talk and see how we can come up with solutions because it is, I believe it is only through joint collaborations, all of us working together that we can at least, if not completely eradicate it, manage it and then go back to the glory years as the Honorable Minister of Trade called it, where we can sell our groundnuts without any fear of it being rejected. 
because it is a natural phenomenon found in the soil. But for the control and minimization of aflatoxin is an important context that we need to do. And I was, that is why I was very happy that this conference is being held for us to work not only nationally, but internationally and coordinate. Because from the statements, you can see that it doesn't only affect Gambia. It affects the whole of Africa. And one of the most serious that people couldn't know is that aflatoxin in groundnut creates liver cancer. And a lot of Gambians, particularly men, have lost their lives through this. So it is important not only for us to try to control it and minimize it, but to educate people about aflatoxin so that people will know. And for us as a government to see that the quality of the produce that people consume, that we export, has the most and the minimal quality quantity of aflatoxin. We are saying this cannot be handled by one ministry. It has to be cut crack across agriculture, trade and health. Because when it comes to food consumption, it's no longer agriculture, it's health. When it comes to uh, disease, it's already health. That is why the food and uh, the quality control agency is under the vice president office. So it comprises and coordinates the activities of the three ministries so that together we can fight and make sure we succeed in reducing aflatoxin in our food consumption and in our agricultural produce. This is why you can see that in our statements, we are now going about outreach to farmers, farmer schools, farmer education, transfer of knowledge, transfer of experience. Because that's the only day through our extension workers that we can reach the farmers and educate them on the ways and methods to reduce aflatoxin and to control aflatoxin. Staple foods such as rice, corn and groundnut are mainly affected by aflatoxin. Health conditions such as liver cancer, stunted growth, allergy reactions, if not in entirety, are also caused by aflatoxin due to food produces people consume and are infected by aflatoxin. Lamin Fall for Paradise TV News. We will now go for a short break, but when we return, we will bring you more stories. Stay tuned. Has happened. Will happen. May happen. Is happening. Let us know. Send an email to info at ptv.gm or call us 611-1666. Paradise TV, reflecting Gambia. Well, the world being a global village, the Gambia government says it will continue to support efforts aimed at improving the status of refugees and other persons of interest in the country. Minister of Interior Ibrahim Mbalo gave this assurance at the Doba held to commemorate this year's World Refugee, Refugee Day rather, in the Gambia. The event organized by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and the Gambian government attracted people from all walks of life. Laminja was there and this is his report. Today is World Refugee Day. This is a day set aside by the United Nations Refugee Agency. The day was first marked in 2001, um, 50 years after the Convention, the Geneva Convention on the Status of Refugees. Each year, this day is celebrated on June 20th. So today, here in the Gambia, um, members of the refugee community, in, in partnership with um, stakeholders, the United Nations Refugee Agency in the Gambia, um, the Gambia Immigration Department, and the gov central government partner to mark this day. So here at the Friendship Hostel in Bacau, members of the refugee community have gathered here to observe this very important day. In the Gambia, it is estimated that over 7,000 refugees live in this country. And uh, this occasion was presided over by the Honorable Minister of the Interior, Ibrahim Mbalo. Um, this is what he had to say. Today marks World Refugee Day. We recognize those who have been uprooted from their homes at an unprecedented scale, leaving more than 65 million people displaced worldwide. In our response to this crisis, it is critical that we address the unique needs of refugees 
and provide them with durable opportunities for employment. But it is also a moment to recognize those communities and people around the world who receive refugees and the internally displaced in their midst, offering them safe place and welcoming them in their schools, their workplaces, and their societies. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gambia will continue to work with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and other UN agencies, the African Union, the ECOWAS, civil society groups, GAFNA, and other humanitarian responses increase our support to refugees and other persons of concern living in the Gambia. Yeah. Among the speakers also we have Seko Saho. Seko Saho is the head of the UNHCR office here in the Gambia. Today, June 20th, War Refugee Day. It is time to recognize their humanity in action. The challenges and the challenge ourselves and the orders to join them in receiving and the supporting refugees in our schools, neighborhoods, workplaces. This is where solidarity starts with all of us. We are in the World Refugees Day. Every year we come and here and celebrate it. Sometimes in, uh, in Kumbo, sometimes in the our uh, size. But today we thank God because uh, this thing, anytime when it happened, we used to think about the past, the how to call it, but the bad thing we we said for the world past. But in the world refugees, this when we came, we see ourselves free, like a Gambian, no discrimination. We really thank God for the World Refugee Day. Yeah. I've been in Gambia for 13 good years. And then what I have observed, that's why the MOU, Refugee Act 2008, Article 17 on, on the Section 41, which uh, um, um, states the, the um, uh, um, right of, of a person who is a refugee, right to uh, um, um, access any financial institution which is being denied and and with this i have evidence and witnesses of friends who have gone to different banks and presented their their refugee id but were denied the right to open an account Commissioner for gambia commission for refugees under the immigration department also spoke in the, at this event we also have other speakers among them uh, the executive secretary of Gambia Food and Nutrition Association, uh, who is uh, Yusufa Gomez. Laminjai, Paradise TV News. It is, it is said that nobody becomes a refugee by choice. And on to a separate uh, story. After almost a month of confiscating Russian eggs from an unnamed person, the Food Safety and Quality Authority are yet to dispose of 640 boxes that investigations or do investigations are completed. According to officials of the FSQA, they are waiting for the National Environment Agency to give them a date to dispose of the wholesome eggs. Lamin Fal has been following this story and he has more. Food Safety and Quality Authority last month intercepted a truck loading 640 cartons of badly rotten eggs upon a tip-off from getting into the public. Since confiscation of these rotten eggs, investigations to ascertain who the perpetrator was has been ongoing and has come to an end. After a series of interviews, Paradise TV did with officials of the FSQA to know what will happen to the confiscated rotten eggs and perpetrator. Paradise TV News has been told that investigators will write a list of recommendations at the end of the fact-finding mission as regards to what is to be done for management to take action. Dr. Zain Abjalo, the Director General of FSQA, told Paradise TV News that the perpetrator will be brought to justice and that they are still waiting for the NEA, which is the National Environment Agency, as regards to when 
and where to dispose of the said rotten eggs. The culprit will be brought to justice. Disposal we haven't done yet. It is true that we're responsible for the confiscation, but what we try to do is also respect the environmental laws of the Gambia. So usually before we dispose of anything, especially such a large quantity, we talk to NEA and ask for their advice on the best method of disposal and the place to dispose. Because we don't want to just go and show up at the backwater dumping site or somewhere else and dump it there and then NEA says that was in the right place. Because uh, when you have things like eggs, there's possible presence of salmonella. You don't want to put it somewhere where there's a water table and it gets into our water system. So what we've been, uh, we've been waiting on uh, NEA and I think they've already written to us to agree on a place and usually when we dispose we'll work with them, not only with them but we make sure that uh, their officers are present, the police are present to make sure because you know sometimes when you take these big quantities of food People can have doubts as to what you're going to do. But if you have a lot of witness, and sometimes we even ask the media to be present to see that we are disposing of it properly and we're not trying to recirculate it back into the uh, market. But at, as of this moment, it is in the warehouse, which we have confiscated the keys and it will be disposed of as soon as any identifies the location which they've done and which we'll be doing soon. Well, the thing is... We, uh, what I usually say is that food safety is all of us. It's our responsibility, all of us. You have the right to demand for better. So when you see something that you don't like, you shouldn't buy it. We, I can say it's safe, but as I keep saying, it's not how the eggs came in. When they were certified, they were safe. What happens is, is how long you store it, the, the way you store it, where you store it, that creates these problems. So we might catch some, but nothing is always 100% effective, which, which is why we ask the public to be vigilant at all times, to pay attention to what they're buying, because I, I feel things can only change when we refuse to buy low quality. So yes, you are as safe as you want to be. You have to pay attention. We're out there doing our job, but we cannot be everywhere all the time. So we ask your cooperation in identifying things that you feel are bad and that you call the authority. Uh, we're hoping that within the next one month, we'll provide a toll-free number that the general public can use to call us at any time with regards to complaints or queries. Attempts to get to the National Environment Agency has so far proven futile. But Paradise TV News will keep on following this story and bring you any new developments. Lamin Fall for Paradise TV News. The Catholic youth in the Gambia and Senegal have gathered at the St. Charles Church for the annual celebration of the cross. This event brings together young people of the Catholic faith to pray and also get education on the principles of faith. We spoke to some of them uh, on Saturday. It's been a good experience starting from yesterday where we had the procession from St. Teresa's down to St. Charles Luanga Parish. After that, we had the adoration and benediction, which was well attended by the youths, though the number was small compared to the present youths that are in the country here. But we are hoping that today, most of the youths will turn out. Today, we had uh, a catechism, and it was good. We had two priests that gave the talk, and it was good. So we are encouraging all youths that when events like this happen that they should come out in their numbers. But we are a trying diocese, so we are encouraging all youths. So far so good, it has been a very good experience because we are still a very small diocese, only the diocese in the Gambia, but we are trying. It has been a very wonderful experience because all the youths came out to experience the power of the cross the cross that was given to us by the late Saint John Paul II, who said that we should, I mean, try to proclaim the cross, the power of the cross, what it has done into our lives. We could remember past what it has really done in our lives. So we pray to God that He will answer all our prayers and our prayers that we are yet to share, starting from today and tomorrow. For me, yesterday it was a very joyous day. In particular, work, um, being with the youths, working with the youths, and also to praise God and to also praise God who has given us the cross to always look at Him 
and to always look at that example that he has given us. And especially as a religious and, a, and, as, um, and a young sister, I thank God for this example and I thank God for all the youths who came out. And to be honest, I, I will say that I'm very um, much delighted in seeing the youth coming out to proclaim Jesus Christ and to make him known and loved. And joining in the procession also is something that I'm very happy. Just to say that it was a very joyous evening and a joyous day. Just be, um, to say that a few disappointment is that most of the youths we are not out because we look at the diocese of the Gambia in general and all the youths that we have in our different parishes. It's discouraging to see only few coming out to proclaim and to make Jesus Christ known and to give witness to, the, to this country that we are living in. I know we are few, but we have a, we have a faith and we are people in this country. So I must say I'm very happy and I'm also disappointed in that uh, area. Also to say that um, for today, being Saturday, I know most of them have their activities, but also the turnout also is very discouraging. And I hope that the procession that we are about to um, take part in, most of them will turn out. Even in their busy schedule, they will try to come and show their solidarity with all the youths who are here since morning and those who have spent their night. So I'm more grateful, even with the disappointment, the, the, the disappointment that we have, we still have hope that something is being done through this weekend and we accomplish that which we are called to do. Well, that was all we have for you for the weekly wrap-up on Paradise TV. But before we leave, a look at the top stories once again. Farabah unrest claims three lives. IGP London Kinte resigns over Farabah unrest. Aflatoxins affecting groundnuts in the Gambia. Catholic youth celebrate cross. I am Fatima Yoyosar, wishing you all a fruitful week ahead. Till we see you again next week, inshallah. The difference between us and other media houses is that we have the best quality materials. Well, working here, it's exciting. I study video editing in Mediamatic. Mediamatic has a great impact in my country. I'm very proud to be here. This is Mediamatic. Mediamatic. We are the media. Welcome to another episode of FIS 
On today's edition, I am joined by Mr. Mamudu E. Bin Jai, working under the Department of Water Resources. Now, he discusses about how poor sanitation and the climate change is affecting our natural water resources. But first, stay tuned for health and fashion. Men's dry hair treatment. You will be surprised to know not only women worry about their hair, but men do as well. Dry hair can be caused by a lot of things, such as shampooing too often in hot water, alcohol-based styling products, excessive blow drying, pool water, too much sun exposure, and extreme heat. Often, the fix can be something as simple as changing your routine. If your hair is dry, try these tips. Shampoo less in cooler water. For most guys, a daily shampoo isn't a problem. But if your hair is dry, you may want to try shampooing every other day. When you do shampoo, use lukewarm water. Use the right shampoo and conditioner. Finding a good moisturizing shampoo should be fairly easy. Look for a professional product labeled as moisturizing or for dry hair use the product each time you shampoo use the right styling product when selecting a styling product choose one without alcohol welcome back from health and fashion joining me now is mr momoru e binjai from the department of water resources mr Njai, welcome to this tell us a little about what your job requires you to do thank you i am momoru b Njai. I work for the Gambia Country Water Partnership. The Country Water Partnership is a neutral stakeholder platform consisting of national stakeholders in the water and water-related resources. Well, precisely our role is to advocate for the implementation of the principles and practices of integrated water resource management at country level. Now, how accessible is um, clean drinking water to the Gambia right now? Okay. As of now, I can say the larger part of the population have access to clean drinking water, but it's not sustainable. Considering the practice in place, because it is prone 